In this video I'm going to show you the backlinks report. So let's go to the toolbar menu, click on backlinks report and we can put in a URL here and then specify whether we want to look at the fresh data or historical data and then create the report. But you can also do this from the dashboard. So I've got an example domain here. If I check this box and then we click on the row itself you see we get these tabs here. I'm interested in the backlinks, so I'll click on this tab and it completes the domain name for me. That way there's no spelling mistakes. It's easier than copying and pasting. I'm going to look at the last 60 days, which will show me the fresh latest links. And I'm going to hit Create Report. And in a few seconds, it will create the report for me, tell me the links, how many they are, and then give me an analysis of them, which I'm going to show you. So it's just running through right now, and as soon as it's finished, I'll show you that. I'll just pause the video while that happens. And it's already finished, so now let's have a look here and see all the information we have. So we've got 11 links. So page links, 195 links from 11 different domains. Site links, this is links to the specific site. We've got 430 links from 42 domains. Now we have also a great deal more information down here, so let's take this bit by bit. The unique class CIPs, 26% of our links are coming from unique class Cs. The higher that number is, the better, because low class CIPs shows Google that there may be something a bit fishy, it may be a little bit suspicious, because those are the easy kind of links to get. If you're getting good organic linking, you're going to have a whole variety of class CIPs. So this is telling us that perhaps we'd want to get a bit more variety in our linking and it's an indication of whether we need to do some more work on that. We don't have any edu links, we don't have any gov links. Again, we could do slightly better if we start getting some links there. Our no follow and do follow breakdown is interesting because we've almost got as much no follow linkage as we do the do follow. Do follow is what passes the juice on to you from Google. No follow does not pass any search engine juice. So generally speaking, we want a lot more do follow than no follow, but for organic and uh, genuine linking patterns, you do need some no follow. So although the numbers here are a little bit low for the do follow, the fact that we've got some no follow as well, it, it's a good thing. But the numbers are slightly off. We'd want to increase our do follow links. The anchor text breakdown here shows us that our brand, our domain, is pretty good. We've got a nice long-term keyword here. And then our main keyword is not appearing too often. As you can see, we've got a whole batch of keywords, but backyard gardening, which is our, our main keyword, is only appearing a small amount of the time, a small percentage. If we over-optimize for a specific keyword, it's detrimental to search engine optimization generally. These days, you have to use less optimization for your main keyword so that it looks natural to the search engine. We can see that the KC rank is relatively low for the links that we do have, so we might want to work a little bit on getting some higher authority sites into our um, linking pattern. And here's the specific links that we've got from specific sites. The pink ones here indicate the no follows. As you can see, there's quite a few of them. And within this table, we can also see not only what the anchor text is and where we're being linked from, but we can also see how many links are coming into the page and how many are going out. And that would help you to determine whether you're being linked to from what we call bad neighborhoods. So that if you get particular links from a site that are not so good, you may want to think about kind of diluting that effect by building better quality links elsewhere or possibly even disavowing certain links. Now at the top we have a toggle switch so we can show information for the domain or for the page. So here if we're looking at the root of the domain we can see the numbers change slightly. Now for the root domain we've got a 76 percent unique class CIPs which is pretty good. You can also see that we've got a great deal more variety in our anchor text and our no follow and do follow is looking a little bit de better in terms of ratio. And as you can see, we're really not overdoing the, the main keyword here. We're getting lots of branding, which is our website name, some longer tail keywords, some generic keywords like click here, visit website, read sources and so on. Uh, and this is a good technique to use when you're doing this and this will tell you whether you're getting it right. The linking pages, again we've got a list of the pages with the KC rank, the anchor text, the page and site link information. 
pink again for the no follows and we can just see exactly who's linking to us and how. If we want to, wherever we see this symbol, we can download the information so that we can use it in other systems or just keep track of it on our computer. So it's a very, very substantial block of information for your backlinks. And that really is a good way to keep your finger on the pulse of the health of your backlinks. In the next video, we're going to take a look at the Rank Tracker.